Morning everybody, Ben the Pat Tester here. Cater and Pat Testing is the channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see all my latest videos. So we're back at a doctor's surgery this morning to start off the week. Should be relatively straightforward, don't envisage too many issues, but you never know. Um, so um, I'll go in, hopefully I'll be able to film some stuff and you can pick up on some bits that I find and some advice. So um, speak to you later. So here's something to look out for uh, when you're pap testing in, in a medical facility. Is there'll be a lot of devices um, that will, they're classed as a medical device, so they come into contact uh, with patients. And those particular items don't fall under the remit of a standard pap test. Um, there is a special medical pap test device and a medical pap test procedure um, that has to be carried out. Now, I don't offer that service, but what you will find on a lot of medical appliances such as this is they get, um, they get calibrated and they also get pat tested as well. So those sort of items you just have to um, avoid testing. Um, I've still pat tested the detachable mains cable there um, because to test that I'd actually detach it from the medical device. So that's okay to test. Um, but these specific items, um, you have to um, leave clear. The majority of them will be tested and calibrated, but there are some that you'll come across where the, the owners or the duty holders weren't, weren't aware that you can't pat test them and they have to be calibrated and tested separately. Um, so you just let the duty holder know and uh, move on to the next one. Here's an example here of a medical device. Now, it's just a lamp that's... Uh, over a, um, a, a bed but you can see here on the label if you see the little um, picture of a person just there um, so even though that's class you can see above it's classed as a class two appliance underneath um, there's a little picture of a person which means it is a medical device so even though you would you know, maybe attempt to do a class two test on that and there's some exposed metal there and there's a bit of exposed metal down the bottom so you could do a test because it's a medical device, you're strictly not meant to. It's meant to be, a, 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 you know, um, be done by a proper medical pat tester. So on this particular lamp, um, I've just done a visual inspection on the plug, check the fuse, check the pins, check the cable going into the item, um, and that's all you can do. Um, you just let the duty holder know that that's the case, and uh, away you go. So one thing I find when I'm going round. I always find uh, previous pat testers, they don't take off the old labels or they've, they've stuck years and years of labels over and um, it just looks messy, it just looks really awkward. It's just for the sake of just taking off the old label um, and then popping on a new one, it just looks so much neater. So when you guys are going around, just um, something to think about, just take the old labels off and just put your new label in. And then, of course, if you've got your name on your label, then it's good advertising for you as well. Whereas if you keep other previous companies' labels on there, there's all types of different names. Um, you know, they might then, in future years, call that number on the label and you lose out on the job. So, um, yeah, little simple thing. There's an interesting one here on a big display screen. This is like an all-in-one display screen. Um, you've got like a motor, raise it up and down. There's a sound bar in the bottom. Unfortunately, the cables are not accessible. They've put this plate on the back here, which is then, they've had a sound bar bracket put on over the top, which is connected to the TV bracket and everything. So it seemed absolutely impossible to get in there. That, that you can't get that cover off or anything. But these things have got a, a built-in PC, you've got the display screen, you've got a touch screen element as well on the front, sound bar, and then extension lead up the top. So all that will need testing as well. So a nice little interesting one there. So here's an interesting one here. Uh, we've got a four gang Belkin uh, extension lead. Um, now we, we tested a few of these downstairs but the insulation reading that was coming back, the insulation resistance reading was a bit suspect on all of them. Um, so I've done the visual check. Looks like a little bit of burn in there, but I think it's just where the casing has faded slightly. But when we do um, 
insulation resistance test if I just show you here yeah so we do the earth continuity so that's all okay we do the insulation it'll bring it up about three yeah so I've been getting a reading on all of those about somewhere between 2.9 and 3 now of course that reading is over the required level of one um, but yeah you'd expect to see kind of greater than 19.99 on that as you normally would on a insulation resistance test now it is a surge protected extension lead i was testing it at 250 volt insulation but there could be other bits inside as some neon lights inside or the, there's a switch on it as well so there could be some components in there which is slowing back a um a bit of a dodgy reading might not be anything wrong with it but um the reading just looks a bit suspect but i'm not really sure what else we can do on that um be interested to know what you guys think but um it, because all of them have been bringing back the same result i've had about six of these it's probably highly unlikely that all six are all failing and giving the the same reading at exactly the same time so i suspect it is something to do with the um electronics inside but uh you know worth one flagging up